This video involves probably the most powerful command I've presented in all my videos and ironically it's also one of the shortest because it's really just one command. So if we create a new project Windows application and call it uh, run prog a run program <laughs> when I go all the way and say okay and we get a form and all we really need is one button so why don't I drag a button over and call this uh, btn run program the text that we actually see on the button and say run program and get a somewhat better font I think 14 point is pretty good I expand this out so we can see all the text and then click away and click on it so you activate some of these formatting buttons and then I do a center horizontal and a center vertically so it looks nice and centered in a little form and now we want to double click on this button in order to type in our super powerful command but before I do that I want to discuss somewhat the concept of a process if you remember this diagram, I did it when I was talking about asynchronous processing and threads. And I said you have a program running and the vehicle of execution in a program is called a thread. You know, the, the step through each line of code. Step, step, step. That's a thread running. And you can actually have multiple threads running in parallel. You can either stop like this and wait for something to end or you can spawn another thread and have the two things running in parallel. And these guys down at the bottom were a number of threads running within what's called a process. These ovals are each processes. And a process is sort of like the galaxy and a thread's like the star in a way. Although you generally don't have a hundred billion threads. And basically uh, what a process is, is it's an allocation of memory in the computer that is exclusively used by that process. It's called the process space. And there's a lot of virtual memory stuff like paging where pages get swapped in and out, but we don't need to worry about that. The operating system handles all that. Basically, it's essentially an area of memory in which the threads can run. You know, it gives them an environment to exist and any other resource like JPEGs or WAV files or whatever are also contained in this process space. And if you go down to the uh, main bar at the bottom of the uh, windows and do uh, start task manager, you can see there's a lot of processes. If you click on the process tab, there's tons of processes that are running right now in your, uh, your, on your computer that you have no idea what they are. And if that makes you nervous, it just means you're sane. Uh, previously, when we ran threads, we did a thread.start. And as you might expect, the single command used to create all this power to generate another process, which in effect is like cloning yourself because you're a process running. And you say create a new process and run something else in it. So this is this command is process start. But before we do that, we've got to go up and do a new uh, namespace using system dot. For some reason, diagnostics. I have no idea why it's diagnostics. So we're system dot process. That makes sense to me. But system.diagnostics, I don't know. But come down here now and go process.start 
and from this point you can pretty much start anything that's on your computer any exe file and even not an exe file if you do some tricks let's say I say I explore dot exe which if you may or may not know is the actual name of Internet Explorer the exe file that's on your system and the reason I can just say the name and I don't have to qualify it with C colon slash subdirectory subdirectory and so on is because it's on the system path and if you don't know what the system path is I, I've described it in a couple previous videos you might go back to those videos but now if we uh, save this program and compile and run it boom there's an, our Internet Explorer with the irritating message at the bottom and all the weird stuff that Microsoft does and all we needed was one command with one parameter that's pretty cool I mean you can use that all day long and you can do this with a number of processes like I, instead of uh, Internet Explorer I can say uh, Firefox and save and run this and now we have a Firefox uh, browser and last but not least there's three browsers I use all the time and you've seen two of them and the last one is Google Chrome which I think is far and away the best one so we run this and click the button and there's our Google Chrome and the power of this command actually doesn't end here because you can specify a second parameter like uh, if we run this and click the button and I go to my business button this is my home page I use and I have it partitioned into a number of sections so that I can find things I look for and click on here we go to my website and if we click on the URL of my website and then click copy and close this and close the program and then we put a comma after the Google Chrome.exe and a couple more quotes and then put in this URL that I just copied and we save and run this not only come up in Google Chrome but we come up in Google Chrome right at my website I mean this is a program that everybody should have on their computer and remember I was talking about the system path previously my website basically has uh, six tabs and the cinema and the library tabs right now are the only ones that are really good the, actually the others are in the progress of being created they're going to be like a, a forum type tabs and things like that but the uh, uh, cinema tab is the videos so if you click on any one of these you'll play the associated video and it's kind of hard to find because these are just the order I put them in so I did a table of contents which uh, you can click on these and they'll bring up the video also but they're alphabetically ordered and they have the main subject that they cover like background worker and whatever and finally the the but index button I think is extremely useful I actually use this myself all the time now and remember we we're talking about the system path if you click on S you can go to the system path and actually because it's so far down in the alphabet probably better to click on T and then scroll up and you see system path comma windows and if you click on either of these you'll have a detailed description of the system path and how you can access it and how you can add directories to it so if you want to just run something from a DOS box you don't have to fully qualify it it'll be on the path and you can just run it the way we've been running programs here so the uh, the other tab that's useful is the library and this basically has source code for all my different programs 
like if we wanted to go to uh, I don't know what's a good one size of directory go down here and you can cut and paste the code for that uh, um, particular program I used in that particular video so you don't have to type it all in yourself you know pausing the video and you know they they're just numbers but if you select them they'll say what's in them with a uh, box underneath although some of them aren't centered as well as I like I had to go back and recenter those babies but anyhow enough about me <laughs> so the last thing I want to say is these the process.start you don't have to just use it for browsers you can use it for basically anything any exe file certainly and suppose I wanted to do uh, notepad.exe, which also is on the system path. And just do it as one parameter right now. And save and run this. And then we have a notepad or we can type things in and do whatever we want and save it and so on but we won't and once again with this you can specify a second parameter so it'll open a specific notepad file that you want to edit so I can say comma double quotes and this is a file I uh, I use just to keep general notes. Whenever I see anything I want to remember. I have another file for very specific important data, but this is just general notes about life and quotes that I think are great. So if I hit uh, that and press run, notepad comes up in this file. And it has a Norman Mailer quote and Todestad, which means, or Todestunde, which means hour of death can't remember where I saw that and si vis pacum parabellum which uh, in Latin means if you want peace prepare for war great quote they actually the parabellum they named a type of bullet after it <laughs> in honor of this quote well I hope you uh, enjoyed this tutorial and learned a lot and I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe